When I graduate, I want to run an unsustainable wine business said literally nobody in the history of humankind like ever. And yet so many wine businesses operate unsustainably. Some take liberties with the environment while others with their workers. Others still are just barely keeping their heads above waters financially. And many wine businesses commit several or even all of these crimes against sustainability. But if you want to avoid these traps, or if you see that your wine business is on an unsustainable path, you need to pay attention to what Mirena Kahlo has to say. She's the communications manager of Wines of South Africa. And South Africa is a 360 year old winemaking region that has been forced to pay special attention to sustainability due to the country's economic instability, its vulnerability to climate change and multi-generational communities of farm workers. So with that said, here are the three pillars of a sustainable wine business, no matter how big or small you are or where in the world you're based. Because at the end of the day, we all want to make money, protect the environment, promote prosperous communities and enjoy our wine. Okay, Morena, let's begin with sustainable uh, environmental sustainability and its importance to the wine industry. How are we seeing a lack of sustainable practices impact the environment? Well, sustainability for us is really a three-pronged approach. It focuses on sustainability of people, of place, and of prosperity. And that needs to be a synergy. If, if one of those pillars aren't there, then it'll actually fall flat. Um, and this is something that we as a South African wine industry are really focusing all our energies on, to make an industry that has longevity, where people can uh, really look forward to a career, where our, our lands can look forward to prospering and delivering really good uh, grapes, mm -hmm. and uh, where those who own the farms and the land and, and brands even uh, have an opportunity to really uh, make a, a, a living mm -hmm. with, with wine. So those really are the elements that we focus on. And, and there's so many different parts that feed into each of these. And then they also individually intermingle. Yeah. And so how are we seeing that lack of sustainability impact the environment in South Africa, but also, I guess, elsewhere? I think one of the things uh, you say lack of sustainability, I think really what we're doing here in South Africa is quite pioneering. Uh, we were the first to introduce what we call IPW. It stands for the Integrated Production of Wine. And uh, it's it's the process by which uh, vineyards or, or, or wineries producers sign up voluntarily to be part of this program. And about just shy of 95% of all our vineyards are actually IPW certified. And what this does is it's it's an auditing process. So you basically agree to have your vineyards and your seller audited for best practices when it comes to sustainable farming. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, there's certain pesticides that you aren't allowed to use. There's a whole list of pesticides that you can't use if you want to be IPW certified. And um, they give you alternatives of uh, things to use to mitigate certain uh, issues that you might have in the vineyard. And that then goes through all the way to the seller and within the seller, um, for example, they measure the uh, wastewater and and a whole bunch of things that they look at like that, that that really feeds through to environmental sustainability practices. Mm -hmm. But then environmental sustainability goes even further than that. So many of our wineries have got water treatment plants where they where they uh, treat the water and reuse the water they've got solar panels on on the roofs of the cellars and uh, in in doing that they obviously don't use um, that resource so we're actually quite far advanced and many countries have since started to follow in our footsteps when it comes to that um, uh, so it's something that we really really are proud of to the extent where we've actually incorporated 
an IPW certification within what is known as the sustainability seal on bottles of South African wine. So it's it's a it's a thin little sticker um, on the wine. It's got a green uh, kind of picture on it, um, and it says sustainability and integrity. Mm -hmm. And what that says to any consumer who is consuming a wine with that label is that this wine was as ethically produced as possible from an environmental perspective uh -huh. yeah. um, and to the extent you can even trace where the wine uh, was made all the way down to the vineyard it's each individual bottle has its own number that you can put in on the website that's given on there so it's it's actually really awesome and it's something we're incredibly incredibly proud of as well Right. You know, South Africa is so uniquely positioned to be a pioneer in sustainability because of our location. You know, in a geographical sense, we are vulnerable to climate change. And I mean, in the Cape alone in 2017, there was a devastating drought and I mean, drought conditions persist to this day. So farmers have had to engineer unique and sustainable solutions. So, I mean, that's just great that we're actually pioneering um, environmental sustainability in, in the wine industry. That's exciting. For sure. Um, yeah. I mean, environmental sustainability goes even further than that from, from our perspective. Mm -hmm. We are doing research on uh, drought resistant varietals, drought resistant rootstocks as well, because of exactly what you've said. Mm -hmm. These droughts are going to become more and more prevalent and we need to find ways of mitigating that mm -hmm. while still ensuring that the industry has a future. Mm -hmm. And another thing that sort of brings to mind is our very unique biome, Fambos, there in the Western Cape. Um, I remember from my days gallivanting about the, the Cape wineries is that so many of them have reserves for this indigenous vegetation. And it's very important to them to farm in harmony with that, uh, you know, fast dwindling and very unique vegetation that is found nowhere else in the world, as well as the birds and the animals that, you know, that are endemic to the region. So yes, the environmental sustainability is very you know, obvious when you are exploring the Cape Winelands. For sure. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about the second pillar, people. Can you explain the role people play in the sustainability of a wine business? And on the flip side of that coin, how wine businesses influence the sustainability of their surrounding communities? Well, without people, we can't really make wine. Um, and sure, you can work with a limited amount of people if you just if you decide to mechanize, for example. Um, but something that we've seen here in South Africa, we've unfortunately got a very, very high unemployment rate, um, and also of, uh, our education levels. Uh, of, of unskilled workers are unfortunately um, not the greatest. So a lot of these people have worked and their farms and their families have worked for generations on so many of these farms. Um, so our farmers have really recognized this and, and, and recognized the importance on giving, uh, giving these families jobs. Um, giving them housing, uh, something that is very unique to the South African uh, wine industry and our farming industry as a whole, is we provide housing on the farms, as in brick and mortar, for um, our farm workers to, to live in. Um, it's, it's something that's so integral and, and, and many producers, while it might be cheaper and certainly easier to mechanize, they choose to continue with, with manual labor. Um, and, and we also know that quality wise to, to harvest with a, a machine versus hand pick, it's a lot gentler. So, so it's, it's worth doing that way. But um, given the history of South Africa as a whole, it's uh, it's really something that gets a lot of focus and a lot of attention. And we really focused heavily as an industry on transformation, on giving back, on upliftment, on ensuring for the future generations. So what farmers are doing, they're creating creches um, and early childhood development centers on the farms where the farm workers' children can be taken care of and get an education um, to, to really maybe have other and better opportunities than their forefathers have had. Um, they, we've also got um, what we call the Wine Industry Ethical Trade Association, uh, or VITA, otherwise known, 
Um, and they are similar to IPW, an independent auditory body that's also, it's not mandatory, you can choose to, to, to be VITA certified or not. But what VITA does is they, they, they audit your farm and audit your practice more from a, a labor perspective and human resources. As I mentioned, for example, lots of our workers don't uh, haven't really been schooled they can't necessarily even read or write but if you have an employment contract they need to know and understand what that says and vita makes provision for that and uh, you need to uh, ensure that your workers know and understand what the terms of engagement are um, even if they can't read they are certain specifications around the use of pesticides and ensuring that workers are properly trained to use the pesticides and workers have the proper uh, equipment when when using that safety equipment. Um, everything from that to, as I mentioned, housing, ensuring that their housing is of a certain standard, mm -hmm. that they have um, water to drink that is safe, um, and, and just their general uh, lives are cared for and looked after and that's something that Vita does. Uh, similar to this is uh, fair trade, well not similar but uh, another very big factor in South Africa is fair trade. We supply roughly um, I think 77% of all fair trade wine that is available in the world comes from South Africa and again uh, a lot of producers want to be part of this because it gives back. It gives back to the communities and it it gives back for a better future. Um, there are other organizations such as the Pebbles Project, which um, uh, starts from very young ages to, to, to have environments for children. They have, for example, mobile clinics that go around um, teaching people about everything from HIV to uh, fetal alcohol syndrome, um, mobile libraries, they uh, educate people with um, uh, technology, the use of technology. All of these things are ways of ensuring uh, that uh, people have a better future in and around our industry. And these things are all happening um, on various levels. Amazing. I mean, certainly the rest of the world can take a leaf out of our book and learn from us. It's, it's awesome. Um, okay, so now let's talk about the third pillar, prosperity. What do you find to be the biggest roadblocks to sustained profitability in the wine industry? Profitability is a very important part of, of running any business, any, any organization, uh, any industry. If you if you're not profitable, you don't have a future. Uh, and that is something that, that our industry really needs to focus a lot more on. South African wine has for quite some time being uh, sold at below par price points. And um, yet our quality is second to none. So ultimately, I think the importance is that uh, profitability needs to almost be at the center of everything because without a good in income you cannot ensure that your workers are paid a living wage um, in South Africa the minimum wage is very very low and uh, the the minimum wage is is really not sustainable yeah. so in order to pay a a, a fair wage um, that allows people to uplift themselves is is really very important mm -hmm. um and and the challenges are multitude you know we have uh, concerns with a very unstable uh, currency um well, when you export, you you know you might set your pricing, and and you don't know how that's going to affect you when certain uh, political uh, issues are raised. So, uh, you know, we obviously buy a lot of of our our equipment, our glass. A lot of glass gets imported from Europe. A lot of uh, obviously cork comes from Portugal. So we're paying in foreign currency for a lot of of what we do, and we are ultimately at the southernmost tip of Africa as well, which <laughs> makes things certainly a lot a lot 
more challenging. Mm -hmm. um, the sad thing for our industry, unfortunately, what we have seen in the past 12 to 15 years is that it has shrunk significantly. Mm -hmm. And the main reason for this is financial sustainability. Um, it's just not as lucrative for so many, especially of the smaller farmers and, and primary growers to continue growing wine grapes. Um, so what, we, what we've seen uh, is that our plantings have shrunk from about 105,000 hectares to about 92,000. Um, our primary growers have gone from about 3,500 to 2,700 and the industry is shrinking. We need to mitigate this and really the main way of mitigating this is through financial uh, sustainability and ensuring that our producers are paid a fair price for mm -hmm. their wine. Right. Um, it's sometimes unfortunately e easier said than done. Uh, we do get beaten down quite significantly, quite hard uh, by retailers and um, you know in, in challenging times like this uh, obviously, uh, you might be aware of the fact that we've had uh, extreme uh, bans on local alcohol sales, which has led us to having a surplus of wine stock. Um, you would imagine that maybe a sympathetic buyer would kind of uh, really turn their focus on South African wine to try and help us out where possible. But unfortunately, we are seeing um, that there are those who are exploiting the situation. Uh, couple that with producers who are quite desperate to get rid of the stock mm -hmm. and and you're sitting in a in a very negative position yeah. um, so financial sustainability really sits at the core of everything mm -hmm. if you cannot afford to run your operation um, to invest in your vineyards to invest in your people then your business doesn't really have a sustainable future those people could lose their jobs. They have no opportunity for, for growth, for upliftment. And your business, you can't replace, for example, vineyards that potentially need to be replaced. You can't buy equipment that needs to be replaced. Yeah. Um, so uh, financial sustainability really sits at the heart of the whole picture. You know, it absolutely blows my fragile mind that South Africa struggles to get its wines and its better wines into the hands of international consumers because like a $10 bottle of wine here could be used as battery acid. A $10 bottle of wine in South Africa is like, could be a life-changing experience. The, the wine on average is absolutely so beautiful and so affordable. Actually, it's cheap, you know, in a, from a global perspective. Um, so anyone watching this buy South African wine, <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah so sure. I, I would say if you were to compare, um, a South African wine at say a $10 or mm -hmm. even 12, $15 price points with wines at the same price point from other countries, yeah. um, and you open them up all side by side, I think you'll be right. very very pleasantly surprised um, at the quality that you get in that South African bottle of wine. True. Because we are a 350 year old industry. We've been doing this for centuries, you know, South Africa, it's in South Africa. Yeah. I mean, exactly. And versus some of the younger wine regions in, in Canada, I think the, the local wine region is just a few decades old. And yet they're selling their average bottle for $20 Canadian. Yeah. So that's about 200 Rand. Um, or maybe 15 to 17 US dollars. But yeah, it's just, yeah, I struggle to understand it. But yeah. It's probably just a marketing problem. It's just, you know, it needs to get the word out. Yeah. There. I mean, this off the record now, um, you know, what happened when obviously the sanctions were lifted mm. um, in in the mid 90s, what, what the South African wine industry did, did at the time was they literally dumped wine in Europe. They just went here, have a cheap, cheerful, cheap price points. Uh, the quality wasn't nearly what it is today. And, and that's basically what happened. It was like, here, have our wine. They chucked it at them. And it was, it was, it wasn't subpar, but it was cheap and cheerful. It, it yeah. said what it did, you know, yeah. it said what it, uh, it did what it said on the bottle. Um, yeah. And, you know, ultimately I think, uh, 
that that's stuck in yeah. especially in our traditional markets our european markets that's kind of what what people see it's starting to change slowly but surely but it is a slow process and in the mind of the consumer they've kind of got the ceiling especially in europe where they kind of go okay if i'm gonna just buy an everyday cheap and cheerful happy wine to drink when i get home i'll buy south african up to the value of say eight ten pounds or euro um, uh, and if I want to take something nice to a bottle stop, uh, a bottle store, uh, a dinner or in, uh, have friends over, then I'll go for Italian or French. And that's absolutely bullshit. Uh, it's just, I mean, it just wasn't, yeah. I mean, I can say this to you because I know you, but it just, it just gets my back up so much. Um, yeah. There's definitely a bias against South African wine and for French wine. And I know that I've tried many more affordable French wines here in Canada and I have been completely and utterly underwhelmed, you know, mm. so. Yeah. yeah, anyway, you know, we keep fighting the fight. Right, well, speaking of fighting the fights, please tell me how your organization, Wines of South Africa, encouraged the three pillars of sustainability within the wine industry, something that is desperately needed now more than ever due to the South African government having implemented multiple bans on alcohol sales during the COVID-19 pandemic, as you spoke of earlier. Yeah, I think uh, communication is absolutely key. Communicating on various levels, wh whether it be social media, um, uh, engaging with buyers and importers uh, around the globe is absolutely key for us um, because this is the, the way we can get the message across. Uh, communicating about the sustainability seal that you can look for when you buy a bottle of South African wine. I must add, however, unfortunately, wines that are exported in bulk are not allowed, even if they if they bottled um, under a brand name. There's some of our bigger brand names that uh, they import. They just export in bulk formats. They uh, bottle it in their own bottling plants. Um, mm. So it's literally the same thing that you would get here on the shelf as well. But it just works out quite quite a lot cheaper for them okay. um, they aren't allowed to put that sustainability seal on their bottles unfortunately in in the market where they are bottling so um, don't think that just because you don't have the seal there that it isn't sustainably produced um, as I mentioned 94 to 95 percent of all our, 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 our vineyards are IPW certified so it's communicating that communicating um, the wine industry ethical trade association looking out for the fair trade uh, mark mm -hmm. all of these things are, are ways of uh, of consumers supporting and of us communicating to the world that we are trying to do our best um, we uh, uh, are also hosting a very, very big trade event. We normally host it every three years. This time we've, we've skipped a year for, for obvious reasons, yeah. um, but we are hoping uh, for the world of buyers and agents to come to us here in Cape Town in October 2022 to attend Cape Wine. And the theme for Cape Wine is Sustainability 360. So we will absolutely be focusing on those three pillars to really highlight uh, the importance of them, to partner up with uh, organizations such as Fairtrade, I, I haven't even mentioned the World Wildlife Fund uh, mm -hmm. and their conservation champions. Um, they've now got oh, probably just shy of 60 conservation champions. Um, but I do speak under correction as to the number. I've just heard of a couple of new ones that have been awarded that. Um, and they look at preserving the fanboss you mentioned earlier, uh, animals looking after them, water, all of these elements is such a big focus and becoming a WWF conservation champion is some uh, is really a feather you can put in your cap as a South African wine producer. So all of these projects are there looking after people. We support Pebbles quite extensively, um, the Anna Foundation, Thunder Child, all of these organizations are here and um, we are hoping to provide them with a platform of showcasing what they do yeah. to really help us as an industry to uh, promote uh, sustainability on, on whatever platform they're playing. Right. And I think winemakers all over the world could look to you to learn about how to be more sustainable in all those ways that you've mentioned. 
Yeah, and Cape Wine is open to the public, of course. No, Cape Wine is a trade event only, unfortunately, so not open to the general public, but trade and wine trade and media okay. um, are absolutely invited to attend this. Um, yeah. it's, but it's people should keep sad. their eyes on it. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, we're, we're highlighting seminars uh, with with many of our partners, the likes of, of, of Amarum, we're in talks with about showcasing how old wines can be recorked. Mm -hmm. Again, cork is a sustainable product. Oh. Um, so anything and everything we can do, we are hoping in 2018, we were uh, awarded green, uh, the, the greenest wine, uh, greenest event uh, expo. And we're hoping to to take this on uh, this title on again this wow. uh, this time around. So um, it really it feeds through to everything, everything we do, everything we use, the water we have available at the show. Mm -hmm. um, so all our partners, they they're giving being given very strict instructions that it's all about sustainability. Right, that is awesome. Because of the pressures of climate change, a flailing economy, and so many communities' dependence on the wine industry, sustainability is at the heart of most conversations in South Africa, which is why people like Marina Kahlo have so many important messages for wine businesses around the world. And if you own such a business or have ambitions of doing so, I hope that what she's had to say today will provide you with the tools you need to be more sustainable and profitable moving forward. And on a side note, Buy South African wine. Seriously. The government periodically prohibited the sale of alcohol during the pandemic, which sent the wine industry into a tailspin. So they need you now more than ever. Buy South African wine. It's delicious. I also really encourage you to check out Brainscape's Wine Academy, where you'll discover a library of super helpful wine guides for people of all experience levels. And if you're interested in taking your knowledge to professional heights with a WSET or CMS qualification, get the Brainscape web and mobile app to help you learn about wine really efficiently. Alternatively, you can just use Brainscape to keep track of your wine adventures by making your own flashcards. Finally, don't forget to watch and like the other videos we have on the Brainscape wine channel and subscribe to get notified when a new video drops. And that's it. Between the Brainscape app, our Wine Academy, and the thousands of other subjects you can study efficiently on our platform, you've got the learning tools you need to rise to any challenge. <laughs>